right, welcome everybody. I, I'm going to have a little different video here today, and I, and I uh, want to just take a little bit of time to talk about an important topic. And that's uh, shown here on this slide, which is a very busy slide, but I think there's a lot of important information. I've, I've outlined the scale from less lethal all the way to lethal, and, and the jewels, as you can see here on, the, on this red line, that goes to a, another red line, which is essentially the, the, the less lethal range. And it's a broad range. And you don't want to go past that red line into the lethal range. But there's, there's a lot of new technology and paintball markers and other markers that are dedicated for pepper balls and round balls. And below 28 joules, these are, these are non-penetrating and the round balls are actually um, very useful for deterrence without inducing injury. And that's a good thing. And, and that's, that's really a well-established, uh, less than lethal uh, it'll, it'll cause dents in metal, but it, it's not going to penetrate. It's not going to kill. And, and these, these, are, these are widely used and available. But there's this, this middle ground, which is, is where a lot of us are interested and a lot of us uh, focus our attention on these less lethal launchers and the transition of paintball markers to this range. And here we just don't know the slope of the injury. You can see there are very different, different possibilities in these curves, and we just don't know at where we're gonna fall based on the jewels that we're putting down range. But we do know from the military and the police and the rubber, rubber bullets that there can be serious consequences and, and you can achieve jewels that are much larger than um, what we're currently working with uh, in the 150, 200 range. And there's a lot of information about this available. If you go to the NIH um, websites, there are over 33 million papers, and of those, you can see here, a, a simple search for less lethal weapons turns up a, a fair number of articles, which include a lot of detailed information about injuries uh, in recent uh, use. And uh, I'll just show you an example here, where if you type in less lethal weapons, you're going you're gonna to pull up a list of articles from this database, and these are public publicly available studies that are available for most people to, to read. And you can see the slope of the um, number of publications over time. And this first one is, is a very interesting one that you can look at. And I'm not going to go through these and show you the figures for reasons of copyright. But the first one is uh, from Los Angeles and 14 patients that were hit with kinetic projectiles over a 48-hour period. And, and, and this was primarily with rubber bullets. And about half of those were hospitalized with injuries in the ulna, testicular rupture, nasal, ma mandible, scalp, and a lot of them required surgery, including dental surgery. So it was a very severe, and these are the kind of consequences that you get. Now, the second study, uh, number 10, is a large study of 6,626 6, patients, uh, electronic medical records, and it shows 89 patients with kinetic or chemical projectiles that were hit, including rubber bullets and 41 injuries. And that study from Minneapolis includes a, a wide range of injuries as well. Uh, the beanbag study uh, was from Austin, Texas, and that was a non-penetrating but severe intracranial hemorrhages, craniectomy was required, facial fractures and head injuries. So there was a lot of severe results as well in that, in that um, study. Uh, which is something you should look at. But number 29 to me was perhaps the most interesting because in that study, as we'll see down here, that was a multi-country study, including Israel, Palestine, U UK, Northern Ireland, South Asia, USA, Switzerland, and Turkey. And there they looked at a number of projectiles, including 41% with metal core, 26% which were plastic PVC, 22% rubber, and there were a wide range of injuries, including ocular, abdominal, psychiatric injuries uh, that occurred uh, from those, including 53 deaths, 300 permanent disabilities. And, and, um, and several of those were, were from shooting at close distance. So they had concluded that at least eight of those were from firing at too close of a distance. But I just point this out because these these databases are publicly available, and, and much of the papers, uh, especially those from New England Journal and some other journals, are open access for people to use. 
And this is an area that, you know, in my, in my normal research career, I, I do focus on using PubMed all the time for biomedical research, but it is a resource even for less lethal injuries and other types of medical related issues. So I, I call your attention to this because I think it's really, really a useful resource to take, take a look at and consider uh, in terms of, of uh, making decisions about tuning these less lethal markers. So as I come back to this um, cartoon that I made to try to illustrate the points, I, I think um, I, I just want everyone to consider this intermediate range and where we are currently in our, in our less lethal marker uh, upgrades and where we want to go with this. I, I think uh, as you increase the joules and as you go up that injury slope, um, you're there's legal consequences and there's um, other issues that will arise. We know that those police military uses, uh, the jewels that they're achieving are, the, in many cases, they're firing at fire with, with actual firearms, but they're, they're firing uh, plastic bullets or rubber bullets. Uh, in other cases, they may be shooting at only 330 FPS, much like a less lethal, but they may be shooting a very heavy six-inch long projectile, as in some countries. Either case, the, the number of joules that they're delivering is, is very devastating. And in general, these have been deemed not appropriate for crowd control. That's why there's a lot of pushback for pepper balls and other things, and even pepper balls uh, um, are causing some serious injuries if you're hitting in the face and in the eyes. And so there's a lot, lot to consider. And I think as everyone works on less lethals, including myself, upgrading, uh, I think there's a certain jewel range that we need to think about. And I think we also need to think about whether we're using a round ball or we're using a pointed projectile. Uh, at the same FPS, the pointed projectile is going to be more devastating um, just because the pointed tip is going to deliver more jewels in a, in a, in a single point and, le and not spread the energy out over a larger area. So it also would be more invasive potentially through clothing and through skin. So those require another special look in terms of attention as well. So not to belabor the point, I just want to summarize and say there's there's a lot going on in the field, a lot of activity, a lot of interesting experimental type uh, developments and innovation. There's definitely room for less lethals in terms of self-defense and home defense. In fact, I encourage the use. That's why I got into this, because I, I think that they have a place in terms of the continuum of force. And I believe that they should be a first line of of defense followed by firearms and lethal lethal weapons. But uh, there becomes a certain point in the middle where they cross a line and they become essentially like a firearm. So as we go forward with these less lethals, let's do it in a rational and thoughtful manner. And, uh, and just everybody be safe out there and take care.